strongest character in each universe. Marvel, Jesus Christ. DC, Jesus Christ. Pixar, Jesus Christ. Dragon Ball, Jesus Christ. Naruto, Jesus Christ. Demon Slayer, Jesus Christ. Monsterverse, Jesus Christ. One Punch Man, Jesus Christ. Attack on Titan, Jesus Christ. Reality, Jesus Christ. The comparison to fictional characters here when talking about the person they believe to be their messiah is uh, is an interesting one. But it's also just a nonsensical statement because he might exist in some of these universes. I I don't know, but they're fictional universes. They, they don't necessarily take place in a universe that is re meant to represent ours with planets that represent any of ours. Like, you know, they're, they're fictional creations by people who could make anyone the strongest creation in their universe. So being like, yeah, my religion, that's the strongest character in this fictional universe in which the author hasn't included them. Owned liberals. Special thank you to my YouTube members and patrons for supporting the channel and supporting my content. How's it going everybody and welcome back to another subreddit video. Today we are going to be once again returning to r slash religious fruitcake. It's a subreddit dedicated to the over the top ones, you know? As always, I have to say that I don't have anything against religion itself. I am not here to bash religion. I'm not here to bash people that believe in those religions, okay? You do you. You believe in what you want to believe and I believe in what I want to believe. What I am here to talk about and laugh at are the people that take that to the next level, you know? The people that aren't just talking about the fact that they are religious, they aren't just practicing their own religion, they're, they're taking it a bit far, you know? They're talking about how they're the only religion that's allowed to exist and all of that kind of stuff, you know? Hypocrisy. <laughs> Quickly before I begin, as always I just wanted to mention, I am live on Thursday, as I am every week. So go check out the stream every Thursday at 7pm UK time if you want to catch the streams. Or they're uploaded to my Blue The Nerd Live channel on YouTube the next day, so you can always catch the VODs. Anyway, let's get into the subreddit. Warning, a cult. So this game was absolutely awesome and great. I loved the way it looked, the way you play, and many more. But as a Christian, as soon as I realized there's a fortune teller on your TV, shrines, spirit board, and Abigail bedroom, a wizard, and much more, including children's sacrifice, I deleted the game. Why do we need a cult on farming RPG games? It's such a shame. I wish it could be possible to disable such things. Anyway, for any Christians out there, do not download the game. It's full of a cult. Okay, I don't know the, the deep lore of Stardew Valley, but I feel like I'm severely, severely missing the child sacrifice part? People that have played Stardew Valley more than I have, is there child sacrifice in Stardew Stardew Valley, because <laughs> I feel like I've missed that. But also, they, they're complaining about the presence of a cult, you know, things like there's a fortune teller on TV, or one character has a spirit board in their bedroom, or there's a wizard. And first of all, it's a video game, okay? Wizards can exist. You literally dungeon dive and fight monsters. That That's a part of the game. Like, it's not meant to be grounded in reality. But like, you get fortune tellers on real TV. People have spirit boards in their bedrooms in real life. So like, that's not weird. That It's not weird to assume that these things might exist in this world because they exist in our world. And it's a video game. At the end of the day, it it's a video game. And they're complaining about like, oh, I wish I could disable such things, but you could just not interact with them. You, you don't have to watch the spirit teller on your TV. You don't have to go into Abigail's bedroom and look at her spirit board. Like, you, you don't have to. Right, this next video that I'm about to play is... It's a really weird one. I can't remember the full context. It's they believe that this boy is a reincarnation of a spiritual man or he's a descendant of him or something. Something along those lines. Uh, anyway, we're just we're going to watch a little video. Yeah, this is this is weird, right? This this is really weird, right? It's not just me. It's, 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 it's just a bit weird, right? Like, that's just a kid. That's just a kid. 
the the real icing on the cake that almost like turns this into a satirical sketch you'd see on TV is the kid just like sat there eating a kinder while all this is going on like but man that it's odd it uh, it's weird dude it's weird that's a child and he's surrounded by people that are basically worshiping him like massaging his feet and trying to like touch him because he's spiritual and it's just we, we've seen a case like this in a previous video on religious fruit cakes and it's just weird and uncomfy and like this child's never gonna get a normal life which is also sad but oh basically these people are being exploited by probably the kid's parents for money. There's probably gonna be money involved, there's gonna be religious donations, and there probably will in the future be like spiritual healing and this kid's a great spiritual leader and it's just not okay, it's just not- that's a child. <laughs> I never understood the stigma around the R word. Westerns and liberals just keep coming with new man-made issues every day to make people vote for them. Having sex before marriage is obviously very wrong, but whether consent is involved or not doesn't matter at all. Both are equally very bad. Why make the difference? The girl will be forgiven by Allah if she was forced, then what is the thing to be sad about? She got sexual pleasure without getting any sin in her account. Girls are very naive anyways, according to biology and neuroscience. <laughs> Getting consent is a piece of cake if you can dominate. That is all what girls crave for. This is enough scientific proof that consent is anti-scientific, but these hypocrite liberals just want to lie. If a guy can't control his desires, it is better to our word, rather than hypnotizing a woman who is not his wife or concubine to give consent. Why let another woman become sinful to keep your sin with yourself? Hypnotize? Okay, first of all, they're, they're claiming that th this claim they're making is rooted in biology and neuroscience, which it's not. Ne I don't need to say anything more on that. But to say that like non-consensual sex is like the same as sex before marriage that those are the same thing like they're just as bad as each other like no non-consensual sex is so much worse she's not getting free pleasure out of it it can hurt it can be traumatic it can scar her for life it could potentially result in her death there are plenty of things wrong with this it's not just like ah free sex Allah will forgive her and also in a lot of countries they will actually execute women for being raped they will and just it it's insane to me and this idea that like ah but sex before marriage is just as bad N huh but also consent is important and you can't just hypnotize a woman into consent and there's no neuroscience and biology that says you can just make a woman want to consent with you and also if you hypnotized a woman it wouldn't be consent if, if that was a thing that was possible that wouldn't be consent and also assuming that Allah would forgive them for being forced would he not forgive them if they had been hypnotized and their free will taken away from them like that's the same thing that's not consent but women can in fact consent and they can enjoy it and they don't necessarily enjoy it if they haven't consented I just I don't understand how this as a concept is so bizarre to people like this and how it's such a liberal thing that women should actually want to sleep with me and it's also really telling of the kind of person if they struggle you know if, if the idea that a woman has to want to sleep with them and that's the reason why women aren't sleeping with them it's quite telling isn't it i i have a feeling it all stems from that kind of viewpoint you know the why won't women sleep with me it must be those pesky liberals telling them that they can in fact choose who to sleep with gosh darn it those pesky liberals all right we got another video here and um the context of this is it's a muslim man who went to a hindu temple in malaysia and started reciting lines from the Quran against idol worship. I don't know how long it is or if we'll watch the whole thing, but you'll get the vibe anyway. So yeah, he's he stood in front of this temple reciting Quran lines about idol worship and it's disrespectful. It's just very disrespectful to that culture and that religion. And the reason you can absolutely without fail say that this is disrespectful behavior is that would he want them doing the same thing in front of his mosque? 
okay? It goes for any religion that would do this against any other religion, okay? And it's if you would not be okay with people of another religion doing this in front of your holy place, it would be disrespectful for you to do the same thing, okay? How about we just let people have their religions? How about we keep our religions to ourselves, we practice our religion how we want, as long as it doesn't affect other people, especially people of different religions. I know it's a crazy thought that we could just like practice our religions in a way that doesn't affect other people, but like I promise everyone will be happier if we do that. Everyone will. This meme sums up atheists perfectly hates Christianity and Christians, but gleefully lives in Christian society enjoying its achievements. Atheists in a nutshell. Reminder, atheism is irrational and its ultimate conclusion of matter, space, time and the laws of physics originating magically from nothingness is a pure fairy tale that requires blind faith. Atheists are idiots. <laughs> Right, I, I've talked about this before and we're going to go into it again because it's relevant. Um, but I just wanted to, before we do that, point out that they've basically said this sums up atheists and atheists in a nutshell, you know, the same thing twice in the same post. Like this looks like it was an image with a caption. Someone added another caption and then someone else added another caption and then someone else added another caption, right? But I got to ask something, OK, because I am religious to an extent. And and I was brought up religious and I went to the church. I studied the Bible every morning. I went to seminary every morning up until the age of about 16. I was preparing to go on a mission. I didn't want to, but I was preparing to, okay? I grew up very religious. I have quite an in-depth knowledge of the Bible. And you know what I know? I know that so much of that book is metaphor, okay? And nothing in that book says that any creationist theory such as the Big Bang Theory is inherently wrong and at no point does it ever say that God disproves that or that disproves God, okay? Those two things can go hand in hand. You know what could have happened? God could have influenced the Big Bang Theory and influenced evolution to get to his grand design. Nothing says that that couldn't have happened and like considering all of the evidence suggests that potentially the Big Bang Theory did happen and evolution is like almost impossible to disprove at this point, those don't necessarily prove God God isn't real, just as God doesn't prove those aren't real, because God could have created those things. But I've also got to ask one big question, because I have never had an answer for this, because no one ever knows the answer, okay? Me included, and I've researched it, okay? Because they want to talk about how atheists just believe that everything came from nowhere and that nothing ha existed, and then suddenly everything existed, okay? But they'll be like, that's wrong, God created everything. You're foolish to believe it came from nothing. God did it. Where did God come from? Okay, what was before God? What existed? God had to come from somewhere. Okay, whether God came from nothing and manifested as God, w whether something made God, I don't know. No one knows. But the fact of the matter is, we don't know. And and God could have just manifested from nothing. Okay, so being like, ah, oh, it's so weird of atheists to believe that the universe manifested from nothing. I'm going to continue believing in a deity that I don't know how came to be. Why is one of those better than the other? They're the same thing. You still have to believe that they came from somewhere. Whether that is nothing or something, whether someone created them, they had to come from somewhere. There had to be something. The whole concept of creation is mind-numbingly baffling and hurts my brain and puts me into an existential crisis of anxiety anytime I think about it because the pure fact that existence is real, something had to come before and something had to come after and just ah. But like we don't know. <laughs> we don't know what made God. Why is the existence of God more sensical than the existence of just the Big Bang Theory? Why can't they be the same thing? Why is one better? I just, we don't know. <laughs> As a Muslim, you shouldn't celebrate or take part in birthdays, anniversaries, Mother's Day, Father's Day, Women's Day, Men's Day, Children's Day, Pride Month, Halloween, Christmas, New Year, Holy, Diwali, Thanksgiving, Labor Day, Valentine's Day, Friendship Day. I don't actually know the 
reasoning and context between Muslims not t tending to celebrate a lot of things like birthdays. I can understand not celebrating Christmas and, you know, other religious celebrations that are like founded in other religions, you know? So Halloween, Christmas, Easter, like, you know, those kinds of things. Valentine's Day are all rooted somewhat in Christianity. Even Valentine's Day supposedly dates back to Saint Valentine, right? But I don't know why they can't celebrate birthdays, anniversaries, you know? Just celebrations of events that have happened that are relevant to that person. Because you're not celebrating them as a deity or worshipping those events. You're celebrating the fact that you have come to be, you know? Or you're celebrating a, a big achievement, like the founding of a country, or, you know, celebrating people for who they are. Like, if anybody can actually answer, if anybody knows, I'm genuinely curious, but like, I honestly don't know why those are something that they are against celebrating, because it they're, they're not related to religion in any way, they're just celebrating like, events that have happened in your life that are worth celebrating in my opinion. So, I don't know, I don't know. I, I don't think this one's a super duper fruitcake, but it is kind of like, uh, as a Muslim you shouldn't do this. Like, it is very much a like, I'm a Muslim and therefore I think other Muslims should live by my code, which is fruitcakey because Christians and Muslims and any religious people that want to tell other religious people how they can and can't practice their own religion is wrong in my eyes. But I, I just, I actually want to know. I don't know that one and I want to know. So if anybody does in fact know, let me know. Uh, I don't know what that says in that language. However, the, it's a picture of Islam versus Christianity where Islam's on a pile of skulls and Christianity's on science, history, technology, politics, culture, philosophy, and economy. We're, we're missing the fact that like Christianity isn't exactly known for being the most peaceful of religions, okay? There have been some pretty famous wars started by Christianity, yeah? Like we know that, right? You know, there was famously a whole crusade. Like there, there were groups of people that went around lynching people and claimed that it was because they were Christian. You know, there have been some pretty deep dark horrors steeped in Christianity, okay? That religion and its hands are not clean. They are bloody, okay? So taking the high ground over Islam, not really. Mm. No, but also since when has science been a foundational core part, okay? Literally earlier in this very video, we had someone claiming that Jesus could beat Goku in a fight and that atheists are stupid because they believe in the Big Bang Theory, okay? That science is not exactly a foundational part. A lot of Christians do believe in science. And again, like Christianity doesn't say science doesn't exist, okay? And a lot of Christians, I think, respect that. But it's the ones that don't, that give religions a bad name, okay? Like, my my mother is Christian, you know? And she very much believes that things like evolution can easily have been influenced by God, right? The practices and teachings most commonly attributed to Christianity, you know, they like believing the Earth's like 4,000 years old. I've n personally known Christians who think that dinosaur bones were put on Earth by Satan to tempt us. Like, the people might believe in science, but Christians Christianity itself, not exactly rooted in it. We'll just say that, okay? The teachings themselves don't tend to be rooted in science. The people might, but the teachings, no. No. This one's one of my favorite ones. Someone's got a sign that says, No liar, potty mouth, atheist, greedy pig, gambler, sex addict, drunkard, homosexual, bible hater, LGBT supporter, self lover, porn lover, hardcore gamer, adulterer, enters heaven. Hardcore gamer? <laughs> Oh man, <laughs> uh, I, I commented on this post. I need to find my comment because it was funny and I can't remember what I said, but <laughs> I just, of all, some of these don't, don't quite fit, you know? Self-lover is another one. Like, oh, you actually like yourself? Sorry, you're going to hell. That's a, that's not a good message to preach to people. Like I understand the idea that pride might be a sin, but like you can be okay with yourself and not be prideful. 
And also, I'm gonna say it, this, holding a sign like this and telling other people they're going to hell is pride. It's a sin. That's spiritual pride. That is spiritual pride. It's the idea that you believe you are spiritually superior to others. You know better than them. You know better than God and your religious teachings. You are telling people that they are going to hell. And let me tell you, that is spiritual pride. And also, the Bible says don't do that, okay? The Bible very much says don't judge others. And in fact, I believe pretty much the exact words, well, to paraphrase, was uh, if you judge others, you will be judged as you have judged them. So, so don't, if you believe in your own book, maybe don't, maybe read it once or twice as well. Like, have you, have you tried that? <laughs> oh, it's, it's baffling. It's baffling. Anyway, let me find my comment. This is my, my comment in relation to the, the hardcore gamer part, because obviously the Bible says don't play video games. And Jesus said, Lo, all ye who spend your days gaming, the Lord hath spoken. None who play Fortnite, nor Halo, nor Call of Duty, nor World of Warcraft shall ever pass the gates of heaven. And it was so. Thenceforth, no hardcore gamers would ever reach paradise. Uh, I think it was recorded by Jesus' lesser known 13th apostle, uh, uh, Jerry, uh, <laughs> but it's just <laughs> It's such a weird one. But also, again, just to just to prove that they don't know their own book, they've put LGBT supporter here, right? And you know what the Bible says? It says love thy neighbor. It says love each other as Jesus loves you. It says don't judge each other. So if you were going around telling queer people or people that support queer people that they're going to hell, guess what? You're doing off worse than they are because you're judging people. You're telling people they're going to hell. You're not loving your neighbor. They are. If someone supports queer people, if someone supports the LGBTQ plus community, they are loving their neighbor. They're supporting other people and helping them get through their days. The kind of person holding this sign, not doing that. So they're sinning way more than someone that loves their neighbor is. This is turning out to be a long video, but I just have a lot to say when it comes to, uh, when it comes to religion. This one was a big yikes. You know how in recent times, Pope Francis kind of looked like he was, you know, coming across as the more accepting pope and naturally catholics were angry about that but and I, he didn't go very far he kind of just said that like gay people deserve to be loved which is like literally just what jesus says is just love each other right uh anyway pope francis says priesthood colleges are full of fatness in anti-lgbt remark report Francis, who is 87, has so far been credited with leading the Roman Catholic Church into taking a more welcoming approach towards the LGBT community. And that's a big yikes. Alan, some people want to reclaim that word and some people are, you know, okay with using it. I just said it and like, I'm allowed to say it as, you know, a queer person. I don't like saying it and I'm still going to censor it in the video, but like, it's a big yikes that the Pope would say that that's a big yikes no <laughs> no bueno i never understand you li racist liberals obsession with our culture what is wrong if the prophet peace be upon him consummated a nine-year-old according to your perverted culture you can have sex with the girl you married or the girl you didn't marry yeah consensually and if she's you know of age yeah according to your perverted culture you can have sex in vagina as well well as anus. I mean, if you're into that, yeah, not everyone is. Also, I would like to point out that in like 14 states in America, I think it's 14, uh, sodomy is actually still a crime. So maybe no. <laughs> According to your perverted culture, you can have sex with a girl or even a boy, brackets gay. Yeah. Again, if they're a consensual adult, yes. According to your perverted culture, you can have sex with a human or an animal? No. Now we're getting into your your making shit up. No one is saying that it's okay to have sex with animals, bro. Nobody's saying that. No one. <laughs> Islam clearly rejects all these four unnatural, oppressive forms of intercourse, but it allows sex with a nine-year-old or a twenty-nine-year-old. Then what is the problem? 
I know you pseudoscientific pigs can never explain the difference in what we allow and what you allow. Pseudoscientific pigs says the person that can't tell the difference between having sex with a child and having sex with a consenting adult you're not married to? They say we can't explain the difference, okay? Let me tell you the difference, okay? We don't say we can have sex with animals, first of all, so we can tick that one straight off. That's not okay. Second of all, the other three cases that have been described are a consenting person who is having sex because they want to and is of age where they are able to consent, okay? They are at a point where they understand what that means and what they are doing, okay? They know how to take precautions, they know what they're getting into, and at any point can back out of it and say no, okay? And what this person is saying is okay, and you know, they're saying those things, not okay. What is okay and is clearly better than those things is having sex with a nine-year-old who doesn't understand what sex is, doesn't understand what consent is, wouldn't know how to say no, doesn't understand the risks that they are undertaking, the effects this could have on their body, or the fact that they could get pregnant, okay? It, they are being coerced by an adult who does know all of those things and knows how to manipulate a child, okay? That's the difference. One of these is with a consenting adult who is mature enough to know what they are doing. The other is with an actual child. And I've really got to say it that if you think a child is sexy, you're fucked. You can't defend that. <laughs> And to be like, I can't believe you'd say having sex with a child is bad when you would have sex out of wedlock with a consenting adult, you're fucked. <laughs> By all means, you can disagree with having sex out of wedlock, okay? You can decide not to do that. You can't decide other people can't do that, but you can decide that you personally don't want to do that. What you can't decide to do is have sex with children. That's never okay. It doesn't matter. If this happened hundreds of years ago, thousands of years ago, it's still a nine-year-old child that we are talking about, and it is not racist to say that that is never okay. And the final post, we're leaving it off on a, on a little one, but it relates to stuff we talked about earlier. That is, it's a billboard that says, God, seven days, nothing, 13.7 billion years. Both are religious, both require faith to believe. They don't both require faith to believe, okay? One of them is a study of research and one of them is an old book that said so okay both aren't religious and again religion doesn't say that this couldn't have happened and you can easily believe that god influenced it you don't have to but you can you're believing a book that was written 2000 years ago that just said god created it it didn't say how and it said in seven days but like again that book is so steeped in metaphor are we really just taking the seven days at face value you, and it's not just a way of paraphrasing the order that he did things in. You know, the stages. Are we going to ignore the fact that this book was translated like six times to get to English where it says seven days? Like, but also, what created God? Okay, you still have to have faith that if God is real, something created him. Just like we have to know that something created the universe. But we have observable facts as to how old the universe is, as to how old our earth is, okay? There are things we can observe, there is research we can do, and these theories are constantly being developed and advanced and changed with new information. But what hasn't changed in the last 2000 years is the Bible. That was written by people in a time where they didn't know what anything was. They didn't know what astral bodies were. They didn't know what space was, okay? They were writing a book. And of course, even if you believe that God was speaking to them, like God was speaking to them as humans, he's not gonna go, Hey, yo, I'ma just tell you the secrets of the whole universe and you've never understood any of this. You don't know any of this. And I'ma just drop the fact that there are hundreds of thousands of worlds out there. The world is billions of years old. I created all of it. Evolution happened. They wouldn't understand. That would make no sense to them. They wouldn't be able to write that down and record it because they'd be fucking baffled. So of course, even if you believe God came to people and spoke to them, he would be speaking to them on terms that they understand of the culture they live in and the book is 2000 years old and that culture is 2000 years old and has changed and god would want us to 
to change with it. He would want us, as we become smarter and learn new things, to develop our views. He wouldn't want us to just take a 2,000 year old book written by people at the face value of the beliefs that those people had. It's a framework. It's not to be taken literally at every single turn. Okay? It's metaphor. There's a reason Jesus used parables. <laughs> oh god, I'm exhausted. <laughs> this is such a long video. <laughs> My throat hurts. But god, as someone who spent years studying the Bible, was really religious for a long time and has researched this stuff a lot, like, I feel like I need to educate on these things. <laughs> ah, god. <laughs> Thank you for watching everybody. I really hope you have enjoyed. I'm sorry this is such a long one. I'm sorry I ranted so much, but I feel like I just have so much to talk about in these videos. If you would like to support me in making more content like this, then I have a Patreon in the description down below. Or equally, you can click on that join button on the channel to support me. It helps a lot more than you might realize, but by no means should you feel like you have to. I'm going to keep making content regardless. A huge, massive special thank you to all of the wonderful people that do support me. However, it genuinely helps so, so much. I'm still looking for a job right now as the company I worked for fell through. So right now the money that comes through supporters genuinely helps so so much. So thank you to everybody that does. Other than that, thank you so much for watching everybody. I hope you have enjoyed and as always I will see you in the next video. I really need a drink. <laughs> Peace out.